in how many ways can two squares be selected from an 8 cross 8 chessboard so that they are not in the same row or same column 8 cross 8 chessboard not in the same column not in the same row and I'm going to imagine an 8 cross 8 chessboard let's break it into one Lovely. I was worried. It'll look all weird. Thankfully, it is working. Right? We want two squares to be selected from an 8 cross 8 chessboard so that they are not in the same row or same column. Let's first select one. Then we'll select the second one. The first one can be any square. It can be a corner square. It can be a square on the side. It can be a square right at the center. Three types of squares are there. First square could be any of these. Right? I'm going to consider each of these scenarios. Let the first square be here. The second square could be any of the remaining 63. 63 squares are there. But our condition says it should not be the same row or same column. Or it should not be any of these seven. It should not be any of these seven. So seven plus seven, 14 are to be eliminated. Already this one is eliminated. 15 are down. So, if this were the first square, we'll have 64 minus 15, 49 choices for the second square. If this were the first square, what do we eliminate? We eliminate this, this column and this row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, 7 plus 7, 14 plus 1, 15. If this were the scenario. Again, we'll have 49 square to choose from. If you think about this one, this row, this column are out. 7 plus 7 out, plus this one 15 out. Again, there are 49 squares. Lovely, this makes life easy. Whatever be the first square you select, you have 49 choices for the second square. Or the number of ways of selecting this should be 64 into 49. Okay. Now, the moment I write down this answer, I'm going to introduce you to a very good friend whom you should be very careful about. This friend is a friend called double counting. Every time you do counting questions, you have to pause and say, okay, am I counting something twice over? In this question, imagine this. Suppose your first square had been this and your second square had been this. That would have been counted. This is one of the 64 squares. I select this and then I've selected this. That will be there. The other way around, the first square had been this. Second square had been this. That would also have been selected. So when you're doing 64 into 49, you're counting every possibility twice. I can select this as my first square, this as my second, or this as my first square, this as my second. Both will get counted. And I shouldn't be counting both. I need to have one selection, which is two squares, which are not in the same row, same column. Or my answer is not 64 into 49, 64 into 49 by two. We will do this several times when you're doing double counting, when you're doing permutation or counting in any form. If you're saying there are 10 ways of doing that, we'll arrive at that by saying how we counted, it came up to 20, but hey, I tell you what, I've double counted 20 by 2, that gives me 10. So every time you count, you think about that friend of yours called double counting. Am I counting once or am I counting twice? If it so happened that I'm counting twice, that's all right. I'm exactly double counting. I can fix this. All I need to do is divide by 2. If you're counting incorrectly, vaguely, randomly, we might count more by some factor. But if you know, but you're counting and you're exactly double counting. That's very easy. Exactly double counting. What do you do? Divide by 2. Game over. So this is not 64 into 49. This is going to be 32 into 49. Whatever that comes out to. Let's see if we can multiply this. 2 into 49 is 98. 3 into 49 is 147. 8, 6, 1. 1, 5, 6, 8. And lovely question. Doable question. But for this factor by 2. 64 squares for the first square, 49 for the second square, all good. But then I could have had A and B or B and A. I'm counting exactly the same thing. So I have to divide by 2. 64 into 49 by 2. 